The Mercedes-Benz EQS sits at the top of the food chain with regards to premium, luxurious electric vehicles. But where does it stand with regards to driving range? We're going to find out today with the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. As with all the tests, we fully charge the EV, which I'm doing right now. And then we hop out onto the highway, drive at a constant 70 miles an hour till it won't go any further. So if you don't want to miss any of the Inside EV's highway range tests, don't forget to subscribe to the Inside EV's YouTube channel and follow us on social media. All right, so we're all charged up 100%. The car is showing that we have 435 miles of estimated driving range. I don't think we'll be driving over 400 miles today, but hey, I could get surprised. I also set the climate control to 68 degrees and on fan setting number one because that's how we always do it when we do these range tests. And I've reset the trip odometer. Now I'm gonna switch it into eco driving mode and head out onto the highway. All right, so we're out on the highway cruising along in this super comfortable, really luxurious Mercedes EQS. Now this is the 450 plus, which is the rear wheel drive version. There's also a 4Matic 580, which has all wheel drive. This version is rated at 350 miles per charge and the all wheel drive version is 10 miles less, 340 miles per charge. So we're expecting to get close to that today, but we'll see. Friend of mine, Kyle Connor did a range test on the same version as this recently out in Colorado. He finished up with 344 miles, but he was on winter tires and I think it was 21 inch wheels. I have the best wheels for range for the EQS, the 20 inch five star aero wheels with the standard or the stock uh, all season tires. So I should actually do better than what Kyle did. He did 344. I'm hoping to hit the EPA range rating 350, maybe a little more, but we'll see. Now I want to talk a little bit about what we do to set the cars up. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we put it in eco drive mode. I also set the climate control to 68 degrees and on fan setting one. We check the speedometer with GPS. I have two GPS apps. The speedometer was perfectly on with uh, the EQS. 70 miles an hour was a true 70 miles an hour. I also have some wind apps to see how the wind is today. It's great. It's only like a two or three mile an hour wind. So wind is not going to affect anything here today. Um, okay, we covered the wheels. Oh, tire pressure. We always set the tires to the manufacturer's specified tire pressure. It's a staggered tire pressure for the EQS. It was a little off, so I had to adjust it, but we're set at that and we're good to go. Now, before we check out, we always check back in at 75%, 50%, 25%, and then the end. I wanna mention something. As soon as I got on the highway today, I thought the range test was gonna be ruined. I came to a dead stop within the first 10 miles of driving. And what happened was there was construction and it took me about 25 minutes to go one and a half or two miles. Now that really won't affect the range test much because then we immediately went back up to 70 miles an hour. So we drove about a mile and a half crawling along at like two or three miles an hour. Only an hour, a mile and a half really doesn't make much of an effect. But if this thing dragged on for 10 miles and I was going 30, 40 miles an hour, I would just have bagged it and done the range test later today or tomorrow. But since it was only about a mile and a half, it's really not going to affect much. What it will affect is the EQS shows your average speed for the trip. And my average speed now says like 20 miles an hour after driving 10 miles. Uh, so the whole trip's average speed is going to look lower than what it is. But we're locked in at 70. We're going to be 70 the whole way. I'm not going to go that far back up the turnpike and hit that traffic again. I'm going to get off at an exit before that because what we do when we do this range test are loops up and down the highways. We don't start at one point and end at a different point. We end close to where we started and that negates any elevation change along the route. If you do a range test and you're driving from point A to point B and you gain 500 feet or 800 feet, that's going to really affect the range test. Doing loops like we do helps to offset the fact that there's constantly some elevation change here to there. Here on the turnpike, it's relatively flat, but it does go up and down. Uh, and I like to be able to finish where I started. I think that makes it the most fair. All right, so we're gonna check back in at 
75%, we'll see how far we've gone. All right, we're at the 75% state of charge point. We've gone a quarter of the range test and we went 92 miles in that first quarter. That's really good. That would translate to 368 miles if we were able to duplicate that for the remaining three quarters. Fantastic, much better than the EPA range rating, but it's not over yet. Let's see how far we go once we've done the whole range test. Our consumption rate sits at 289 watt hour per mile, which translates to 3.46 miles per kilowatt hour. That is an excellent consumption rating for such a big, powerful, heavy luxury car. Mercedes did a good job with this so far. We haven't gotten there yet, but we'll see what it looks like at the end. But color me impressed 25% of the way through the range test. So we're 50% state of charge, halfway through the range test, and we've gone 193 miles. Yeah, we went 101 miles in that last quarter. That's fantastic. I mean, we're gonna get close to 400 miles range. I don't think we're gonna hit 400, but we're gonna get close. This is pretty great. The uh, EQS is really proving to be a range monster. This is fantastic. The uh, consumption rate got better. We're at 279 watt hour per mile, which equates to 3.58 miles per kilowatt hour. Now that's better than some of the, like the little economy cars that we've tested and range test here. So I tell you, Mercedes did a good job with this. It's, I, you know, they definitely made an efficient vehicle. A lot of it's probably the aero, which is important at speed, at highway speeds, aerodynamics is super important. And as you can tell, the front of this vehicle is super aerodynamic. It was definitely made to reduce drag as much as possible. And I think some people would say at the expense of the exterior styling, but I'll leave that up to you to judge. But to put it to perspective, this is gonna be by far the longest range EV we've ever tested except for the Lucid Air, which we did a few months back and that came in at 500 miles. That is just crazy. But the Air does have a bigger battery pack than the EQS. Not that much bigger though, but Lucid is really the efficiency king. Uh, now, to be fair, we haven't tested the long range Tesla Model S yet. I did the Plaid Model S about six months ago, the new refreshed Plaid, uh, and that came in at 300 miles, but that's not optimized for range like the regular Model S is and has big, wide, huge tires, I and mean, that's a crazy high performance vehicle. We are going to get uh, a Model S soon, the long range, and, ro and range test it because that is an EPA range rating of, I think, 405 miles, 404, 405, somewhere there. So it should be really close to what the EQS does. Neither are gonna match what Lucid does with the air. But I think uh, it's possible that the Model S long range could get close to what the EQS uh, delivers here today. We don't know what that number is gonna be yet, but it's looking like it's gonna be north of 370, which is just nuts. Um, I'm impressed, and I tell you, if you're gonna be trapped in a car for five or six hours doing a range test just driving in circles this is a nice car to be trapped in because it's super comfortable now yeah i don't have the air conditioned seats on the ventilated seats which this has because i'm not wasting any energy i just have the radio on again you know we try to do the best we can to limit the energy we waste and just use as much as we can to power the vehicle so we'll check back in at 25% state of charge and see where we are then. All right, we're at 25% state of charge and we have traveled 290 miles. So that means the first leg of the trip, we went 92 miles, the second leg 101 miles, and on this leg, we went 97 miles. Not bad, and I tell you, the range estimator says we can go another 104 miles, so we're getting dangerously close to 400 miles. We'll find out soon when it's over. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I think I forgot earlier was temperature. Now, obviously, electric vehicle range as well as its charging capability on DC fast chargers is highly dependent on the temperature. The ambient temperature, the temperature of the battery is really what matters. And here in New Jersey, it was in the 40s overnight. When I started this range test, it was 52 degrees. 
and it has crept up now to 68 degrees. But the fact that we started in the 50s and the battery was cold soaking in the high 40s overnight leads me to believe that it probably could have done even a little bit better if we would have done this rage test, say, two months from now when it was in the high 70s, low 80s. That's perfect range weather. So, you know, as good as it did, I think it could have done better. Um, maybe I'll get one in the summer. I'm not sure. Mercedes doesn't have a lot of these in their press fleet. But what I'm really interested in doing is getting a hold of one next year in like December or January or February, one of those months when it's like 20 degrees out and doing this same range test on the same course in like 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit weather. That'll be really interesting to see how much of a hit it takes because we're going to get close to 400 miles here today. This is amazing. Uh, I can't wait to do the Tesla Model S long range. Uh, not plaid to see how it stacks up against this because it's going to be really close. Uh, in any event, that's it for our last check-in. Uh, next time you're going to see me is when the range test is over and we'll talk about the final stats. All right, that's a wrap. We're here at the Electrify America DC fast charging station about to do a full zero to 100 charge recording since we have the battery down to zero. And the EQS pulled up with 395 miles on the trip meter. Now I need to explain that a little bit because I pulled off of the highway and stopped driving at 70 miles an hour when it was at 1% state of charge and I had driven 391 miles. And then I did the next four miles at about 45, 50 miles an hour on a secondary road here because I wanted to get it down to zero. It's a, sometimes it's impossible to time it perfectly, pulling off the highway right when the battery, battery is zero, but I did pretty good today. I pulled off at 1%, so you could either use 391 as your 70 mile an hour highway range or give it the extra four miles because I was able to drive it 395 miles. And when I ended, the state of charge was at zero, but the range estimator did say it had two more miles left in it. So the, th the pedal response was starting to get really squishy and I was concerned about running out. So I circled back and came here now. So it does say two more miles. So it's possible I could have driven this 397 miles. So I finished up with a consumption rate of 3.67 miles per kilowatt hour, which is fantastic for such a big, heavy car. It has a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if you do the math, it proves out the consumption rate and the battery size. There really was nothing left in this battery. I might've been able to go another mile or two, but that's about it. So the Mercedes-Benz EQS 450 Plus is the second longest range that we've ever tested here on the Inside EV 70 mile an hour highway range test, only beaten by the Lucid Air, which did an amazing 500 miles. Well, that's it for our range test today. If you like what we're doing here at Inside EVs, please click that subscribe button, follow us on social media, all that good stuff, so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching.